All right, listen. Do you know why? Do you know why it's now dark in here? Because we're talking about something spooky. In line for Halloween at that. Spooky! Wait, let me do that again. Spook! Spook. Okay? We're getting spooked in here. Why? Why exactly are we getting spooky in here? The answer is because I want to talk about modernity. Paul Joseph Watson likes to complain about modernity. There was recently, and I'm going to find it again, and I'm going to have to scroll down quite a bit because Paul Joseph Watson is nothing if not an aggressive tweeter, and I respect that. Paul Joseph Watson talks a lot about modernity. Paul Joseph Watson is a, is a fascist. I've said this before. He tweeted this video out or responded to someone else's video that was posted. I don't really know or care. And um, it's, a, it's a video, as you can see, of a, uh, a, a fat ass, not really the fattest ass, but a nice ass, um, a cradling a cup of beer uh, as it is poured uh, in some bar somewhere. I don't know. Anyway, Paul Joseph Watson... This is why the terrorists hate us. Paul Joseph Watson has done stuff like this before. Um, Paul Joseph Watson has posted, for example, modern art, like Duchamp's Toilet, and complained about modernity. Sometimes Paul Joseph Watson will talk about women being sluts or sleeping around too much or... or, or statues that have uh, uh, women with penises or men with vaginas and look at that and then say um, modernity is disgusting and yeah paul joseph watson also posted the twerking thing remember the twerking video the butt bounce but ounce but ounce but ounce remember the butt 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 big big booty what does modernity mean? Well, what I'm going to say right now is relevant to fascists, okay? Let's talk about fascism. Actually, fuck that. Fascism is boring and deliberately incoherent. Let's talk about fascists. Fascists blame a lot of what's wrong with the world on modernity. They call it that. They call it modernity. When we leftists complain about fundamentally the same problems, we tend to use terms like capitalist alienation or marginalization of the working class or the asociality of liberal democracy or things like that. The reason for the dissonance here is because leftists have academics and fascists don't. So we have really cool terms to specifically describe our problems and fascists don't. But what are they talking about when they say modernity? Modernity in the sense it's modernity, not modernity. I like how I pronounce it. Modernity? Modernity. Modernity. We're going with modernity. When fascists say modernity, what they're talking about usually is uh, um, anything which arose following um, the advent of liberal democracy, of liberalism. So the Enlightenment, essentially. And things prior to that are in the purview of traditionalism. People who want to return to that or return to something similar to that are traditionalist. Um, and people who don't are, are modernist in this dichotomy. Now, there are many other ways that people can be modernist. But in this dichotomy here, this is what this means. And when Paul Joseph Watson looks at a, a, a video of a woman holding a beer glass with his ass, um, and pouring the beer glass, uh, pouring it full of beer, and then complains about modernity, what he's really talking about is women's liberation as a concept. Um, that um, he's complaining about the fact that in a liberal democracy, women are free to dress how they like or do this. What he's essentially hearkening back to is an era where women, uh, his, her, Jesus, guys, you fucking care so much about gender. Fuck, I thought you were all gender abolitionists like me, you fucking posers. I don't give a fuck. What Paul Joseph Watson is doing is hearkening back to an era where women couldn't do that sort of thing without facing 
severe um, social consequences. The Romans had a really sexual culture. I know that, but that's not what people talk about when they talk about traditionalism. Um, fascists will also talk about the liberal, tr um, the liberal like promiscuity of Rome bringing about its downfall. They talk about that all the time. How all the sluttiness and homosexuality of Rome led to its downfall. So they don't. They are not talking about Rome. They're talking about feudalism and the social order that came about from it. And this is the problem. There are problems with what fascists call modernity. For example, I think that people are really lonely these days. And when I say I think, what I actually mean is that they are factually, according to all studies, studying that sort of thing. Uh, I think that people are becoming more and more virginal. And that's not a good thing. They're having more and more trouble having sex, finding partners, finding relationships. Um, people are having a harder and harder time making it on their own. The definition of a family, what it means to be a family, is, is waning. It's growing less strong. And this causes a lot of people loneliness and isolation. Most fascists are socially uh, anxious um, kind of fail sons. They're kind of like loser dudes. And they tend to be white in America because fascism tends to be accommodated with ethno-nationalism. Um, and they tend to be kind of like losers, you know? Um, as in they don't have much personal success. Now, sometimes they do. Paul Joseph Watson is obviously quite popular and wealthy. It'd be stupid of me to deny that. But for the most part, the people who follow in lockstep are people whose society has failed. These are people who are um, having difficulty with their lives, with their relationships. They're lonely, they're listless, they're anxious, they're restless. They don't know what to do with themselves. And a lot of those issues seem to come from modernity. Because in the... Now let's not talk about the real pre-modern world, which was shitty and horrible and unlovable. Let's talk about the imagined pre-modern world, where... You had strong family ties, families stuck together, people married young, basically everyone got wedded. There were strong social rules in regards to performance and behavior with the other sex, meaning that people didn't have as much listlessness when it came to um, what to do with themselves. What's more, women were kept in line, meaning that they had very little social autonomy, and the men, the fascists, again, mostly men, who have trouble with women would wouldn't have the to work to deal with the same um, wantonness. If you go on to traditionalist Twitter, so these are people who idolize the pre-modern world. You'll see people who jerk themselves raw, imagining marrying a pure virginal sixteen-year-old Aryan farm girl, fucking her like twice a day raising a bunch of children, and living and dying like peacefully together on a farm. Now this is of course nonsense. They don't mention the wading through shit, the horrendous, cruel, oppressive laws, the fact that most people back then were miserable and disease-ridden, the poor t like the, ev everything associated, they, they lie and they lie of course, but it's the image in their mind. And I want, and I'm a sociologist, or at least I pretend to be one, so I like to imagine, how do we extract the problems fascists have with modern society into meaningful cogent arguments and see what we can do to actually work on those things. I think that's very, very interesting to me. So people are getting lonelier. Men and women are, their relationship with one another are getting um, a little more complicated. It seems like sometimes to some people, women engage in what is called hypergamy or they'll jump around between the men that are most sexually ideal uh, until they're like 30 or 35 or whatever. And then they'll settle down with some beta orbiter who will just pay for their bills. Um, people are having harder times finding relationships. These are, with the possible exception of the hypergamy assertion, real issues. So what do we do about that? The funny, the tragic thing is, 
a lot of the problems that fascists identify as an example of why modernity must be rejected are actually problems with capitalism. But not just that, they're problems with reactionary politics too, that could be addressed through a progressive leftist mindset, but they're not willing to, because that requires tackling the problem itself rather than putting a mask on over its symptoms. Let me give you an example. I used this example earlier, okay? But I'm going to do it again. When fascists talk about modernity and its modern social problems, what I imagine they're saying is they finally get a prescription for new glasses and they can finally see for the first time in their life. And now that they can see, they realize that the wallpaper in their bedroom is kind of ugly. They couldn't really make out the decal before, but now that they can really see it, it looks pretty ugly. And rather than fixing the wallpaper, they break the glasses. That's what I, I feel like that's what we're looking at here. Rather than looking at the problems brought about by modernity and working to fix them, or more accurately, the problems exposed by modernity, they want to return back to an earlier time when society was organized so authoritatively that those problems couldn't even be seen for what they are. So here's an example. Is it really an ideal society where loneliness is kept in check only because women who don't marry men by the age of 25 are considered to be unlovable harlots? Is that really the ideal way of solving loneliness? Or here's another one. Right now, people are having trouble working their jobs, getting the economic parity that they need to live lives fairly and equally. Is the best solution to this really to toss all of the immigrants and brown people out of a country and throw ourselves into a myopic protectionist state that has no chance of competing with a global capitalist market for as long as we can pretend that this system is capable of sustaining the wages of domestic workers? No. Is the best solution to men's feeling of listlessness and alienation to socially condition them to never talk about their problems? No. But instead of dealing with these issues, they work to put masks up over them. And leftists and progressives are capable of addressing these issues in ways that meaningfully improve the lives of the people who have felt hurt by the alienation associated with modernity or liberal capitalism. But they're not interested in that, either because it would hurt too much to actually confront the source of the problem, or more likely, because they're attached to the system that is abusing them. How many people, chat, be honest with me, how many people talk about how they despise what's being done about their work, how jobs are being outsourced and those big greedy lobbyists or what have you, da da da, ruining the wages of the working people, but they hate the word socialism. They love capitalism. They'll defend it to their dying breath. They love capitalism. They just complain about its symptoms every hour of every day, relentlessly. Here's a personal one. How many dudes out there complain about how there are bullshit double standards about how men and women are supposed to act, how men have higher suicide rates and higher rates of homelessness, but then turn around and make mockeries of other men for crying in public or for being open with their emotional state? How many men are there who complain about that double standard and then go out and perpetuate the systems that lead to its creation? It seems to me like a lot of problems with modernity are systemic, but not in ways that are necessarily intrinsic to liberal capitalism. They're instead problems that have existed in some form or another for a long time that we're getting close to addressing. But 
to truly address it, you have to build a new system around it. The gender dichotomy that existed for a very long time in most parts of the world was... There were differences, of course. There are always variations because it's a social construct. But for the most part, for the most part, men control most everything. Women are kind of property. It's okay to rape your wife. It's not rape if it's the wife. This was the case in some United States states up until very recently. And, um, you know, women just kind of sat around barefoot and pregnant. They would work if they were poor, but elsewise they just took care of the kids. This has been the case, gender dichotomy, for a pretty long time. And now, in a progressive society with liberal democracy, as both men and women work in more or less equal measure, and the gender pay gap, to the extent that it exists, is growing smaller and smaller, men and women are becoming more similar as social icons. What do we do with that old dichotomy? It's vestigial elements exist in the myths that we tell ourselves. We tell ourselves about the strong, independent American man who uh, doesn't take shit from nobody, but also never complains about his personal problems, and the, 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 the cute domestic wife who is soft and gentile and maternal and takes care of all those underneath them. Those stories we tell ourselves, those archetypes we idealize, still exist in our heads, maybe even more so than they do in reality, and we're trying to imprint that expectation onto a reality that no longer fits with it. The system doesn't work anymore. But the old system wasn't good. I'm terribly sorry. And to fascists, I understand most of you literally just do not care about brown people or women. Or trans people or gay people or anything. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. But I do. It's a difference between us. And a social system that relies on the de facto indentured servitude of women to perpetuate itself, the uncompensated labor of housekeeping and child rearing, the social stigma that comes along with being an unmarried woman, if essentially making women second-class citizens is the only way to perpetuate the gendered system that you think works better than this one, it's probably kind of a shit system. What if we thought of ways to make life better for people rather than just crying like a child who's burned their hand on the side of an oven and running back to their room. What if we made an effort to meaningfully build new systems that don't just feel good, but actually improve our lives? What is it, what is it that Paul Joseph Watson complains so much about? Paul, what are the things that Paul Joseph Watson will look at and say, ugh, modernity? Well, Duchamp's, um, what, what is it? I called it the toilet earlier. What's the actual name? For the, uh, for the toilet? I actually forget. The fountain. Yes, the fountain. The fountain. Everyone shut up, because I already have the... I already have the answer. He said, ugh, modernity. Which is funny, because he's responding to an art piece that was submitted, like, a century ago to prove how uptight and stuffy the, um, the art exhibit, um, um, folks were back in that day. So, um... He's so Paul Joseph Watson is literally taking a position that would have been considered conservative a century ago, which is cool, but whatever. I mean, they're a fascist, right? So that's the goal. Um, what exactly is the issue with the concept that art can mean whatever is considered to be art? The fountain did, after all, elicit quite a bit of discussion. It did elicit, after all, quite a bit of artistic discourse. I think that qualifies it as being art. I don't see why it wouldn't. It's one of the most famous art pieces of the past few centuries. I don't know why, but by what definition you could possibly say it's not art. Maybe fascists are just boring and they think all art can be is a bunch of neoclassical paintings of Roman dudes standing around looking grievous at, at, at events of some historical note. Maybe that's all art is to them. It's white marble statues with no paint and paintings of people looking serious with perfect mathematically coordinated angles for the uh for the for the for the uh, perspectives of all the buildings and what have you when they say rap is in music even though rap meets every definition of music you'd actually have to be an idiot to defend that point but they're not trying to defend that point the actual 
The actual argument isn't rap isn't music or Duchamp's fountain isn't art. The actual argument is that it's degenerate art, that it is art which is antithetical to the morals of a good society. Now, how you define what a good society is, I couldn't tell you. I don't know what's going on in their heads, but I will say this. To me, a good society is one in which public figures do not make millions of dollars espousing completely ahistorical opinions about the legitimacy of art. A good society is not one in which you can declare an art, a piece of art you find uncomfortable, degenerate, and then leave it aside. A good society is one which values art, which considers artistic contributions meaningful, which thinks about art it does not like, and thinks on art it does like, considers the differences between the two, and makes meaningful arguments without arguing that one is not art. Because that society, the society that I just described, is one which encourages values like freedom, free thinking, you know, freedom of expression, um, introspection, and artistic development. Maybe that's degenerate. A lot of fascists do think freedom is degenerate in a lot of ways. But why? Paul Joseph Watson said that twerking room was degenerate, that twerking class. Paul Joseph Watson thinks it's degenerate for girls to uh, 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 fill up beer glasses with their, uh, uh, with, with their ass cheeks. What is that? I, okay. I mean, it's... Um, it's a little perverse to fill up a beer glass with your ass. I mean, I won't deny, you know, it's a little salacious. Why so fuddy-duddy, Paul Joseph Watson? I'm genuinely curious. It's funny because Paul Joseph Watson, in the past, has complained about SJW being joyless, puritanical, moral police who want to censor sexuality in media. And now, Paul Joseph Watson, because that was back when Paul Joseph Watson was just a conservative. But now, Paul Joseph Watson is a fascist. So he's okay with anti-fun moral police uh, puritanically censoring sex as long as he's the one doing it. It's just funny how that wraparound works. Why is it degenerate to do that with your butt? I mean, it's a little, like, weird funny, I guess. It's like, I don't know. I don't, I don't really care that much. I don't spare much thought for it. Why is it, why is it so bad? Do you care that much about that woman's career choice? I mean, if, you're, if you'd argue that what she's doing is, like, a bad decision then even if you could somehow substantiate that argument, it's just a person doing something on a camera. I don't know how you could really form an argument around that. I don't understand. Unless your problem is with the very concept of women being able to be salacious. Your problem is that women have the freedom to exhibit their bodies in that way. And why is that bad? Well, I know why it's bad to you. You believe, Paul Joseph Watson, and to the fascists who watch Paul Joseph Watson, you believe that for a woman to openly display sexuality is to turn away from the pure moralistic family values that made the Western world great. And that's horseshit, of course. People have been fucking around and showing their asses off in the West for centuries, millennia even. But it's a myth you like to tell yourself. It's all myths. You think that it's a societal rot. But you can't make arguments to that effect. And this is part of the deliberate irrationality of fascism. No arguments can really be made to substantiate these claims of degeneracy. Like, they, they, they can't. It can't be done. I've argued with fascists, buddy. I know. There aren't any good arguments out there for it. Fascism is deliberate irrationality. But the only point I'm trying to make here is that I'm not afraid of discussing these problems. I'm not a liar. Sometimes immigration brings issues. 
there are problems with black culture. Sometimes men do get shafted by the legal and social system. There are issues right now with male loneliness. There are problems out there that reactionaries and fascists will sometimes say only they are willing to talk about. But I disagree. I'm willing to talk about all of these things. I'm also willing to tell the truth about them and to find actual solutions more substantiated than I'm scared by one problem amidst the hundreds of benefits associated with our society and would like to ditch them all to return to one which I believe would be better because I have mythologized the past to the extent that I am essentially LARPing when I read about history. That's modernity. Modernity is a mixed bag. But you should not listen to the people who are only capable of expressing contempt for modernity when they see women or trans people or black or fucking whatever else being rowdy without offering any substantive critique other than accusations of degeneracy. Because those people don't want to make society better. They're just afraid of it as it is today.